So as you can see, today we are doing some carbide machining. This is a piece of VM15 carbide. It is 89.1 Rockwell and 15% cobalt. First order of business is we got to drill two M5 uh, screw threaded holes. Uh, we're drilling at 4.2 millimeters and uh, as you can see I'm cutting a little bit of oil into the air and that air oil mixture is what's evacuating the chips and the oil, while it does give a tiny bit of lubricant to the tool, it's more there to uh, kind of keep the swarf from going as airborne. Swarf control when you're doing carbide milling is pretty important. I put some uh, sheets down on the ways and toss them when I'm done and then the machine also gets a good scrubbing. Um, and then the, the oil, the flood oil, has micron filtration and that kind of gets the last of it. Um, as you can see, I'm speeding up a little bit just to kind of get through it. Um, the drilling is pretty reliable, as is the thread milling, and you don't necessarily need a high-speed machining center to do it. So the drill, I think, is going 4,000 RPMs, and the thread milling operation is going 8. So even my Haas can and has done carbide drilling and threading, and uh, it's really no big deal. Now, I think for roughing and uh, finishing. You really need a true high-speed machining center, but that's a different case. So now I'm putting in a thread counter bore, and this is really important on carbide. Uh, even tool steels, it's super important. But basically, it's a counter bore that's a little bit bigger than the major diameter, two, one and a half to two pitches deep, and that prevents chip out. Uh, it just puts a little more meat at the top of the thread and the face that isn't getting pulled on. So when you install a screw into a thread, it actually elongates a little and it can cause the, the topmost thread to pop off. And in tool seals, it's a small little chip, but in carbide, it can take off the entire bottom half of a part sometimes. So just a little counterbore like that can really go a long way. Now I'm putting a quick chamfer on the part, just with a one millimeter ball mill I had in the machine. So part of being a die maker is knowing when not to chamfer. This is the bottom of the die. We can chamfer it, but the top has to be sharp. Um, now we're doing our thread mill. As you can see, it's pretty slow. So we take it in one pass from the top, and uh, the thread mill comes with its exact measured size from factory on the box, and each one's pretty different. The coating they use varies in size quite a bit. But you just input the size and you get a perfect thread every time. I've literally never had to recut a perfect fit every single thread I've ever cut with this company. So, um, the ease and speed of the process compared to hole popping and ram EDM in the thread is just huge. And uh, I think a lot of companies dip their toe into milling carbide just for the sake of being able to do threads. All told, it's about three minutes per hole to drill and thread mill. A lot of people think the swarf is like a full-blown dust, but um, as you can see there before I blew it away, it actually has some length to it, and if you put it under the microscope, it really looks a lot like most milling chips. It has kind of a number six shape to it and a little bit of curl. I'm not going to go too deep into parameters, speeds and feeds and all that, because carbide can be wildly different in how it behaves. Not just grain size, that's you know what a lot of people think of, but the uh, binder content. Uh, this one's a 15% cobalt, and it'll, it'll run very different compared to something like a 6% cobalt, or even binder type. Uh, and so it's really very case dependent on what type of carbide you have. I will say, uh, less cobalt usually goes worse, um, but too much and it gets a little smeary and that can reduce tool life as well. So we'll clean the hole out here and we'll check it with our thread gauge. 
Uh, you do have to take care to get as much of the crud out as possible because you don't want to lap your thread gauge. Now, after this, we can move on to the milling. So first thing I try to do if I'm milling carbide is can I grind it with a grinding pin in the mill? Um, and I like that if I'm using like a long length of engagement. The other option I look at is solid PCD. Uh, these are probably the state of the art in terms of milling carbide. They have 15 flutes. So even the small feed per tooth that these cutters run with 15 flutes, it can be quite efficient. Uh, but these are also the most premium cost option. But as you can see, it has just such a low cutting force. I'm holding this one part here with just two M5 screws, and it's only on the, the edge of the rib, it's only holding on by two millimeters. And uh, it's incredibly stable, and you can also see what a nice floor finish it yields. Um, I really like these cutters, but they don't always work out for me from a job shop perspective. So I use these coated ones a lot. And we saw the thread mill earlier. Now this ball mill, it has the problem of each ball mill is a little different in size. So sometimes if you're doing uh, 3D contouring, you have to constantly update your, your cam program. But you could also use the ball mills as a feed mill. And uh, they offer pretty decent metal removal this way. Not as good as the solid PCD, but uh, I'm happy with it for most projects. Now, even the cheaper coated ones, this little handful of tooling here costs $2,100. So, now moving on to the milling, I have to be careful with this EDM feature. Uh, if I go ripping across it, it can chip. So, what I'm going to do is counter bore that area at reduced speed rates and reduced depth of cut and kind of baby it and get that stock cleared off, and then I'll go in and rough the rest of it. Uh, now, I also have the option of roughing it with the surface grinder with a diamond wheel, and that's what I would actually have done on this part, but I wanted to show this just sometimes you get a EDM feature that's not accessible with a grinder. So when I do it on the surface grinder, I take the time to model the stock that I'm done or I'm left with from the grinder, and basically that allows the roughing to not cut as much air. We've removed all this material except for 10 microns on the floor, and then when it goes to roughing, it uh, it also leaves 10 microns on the floor, and it, it saves just a lot of air cutting through the middle and the ends there. Here is the ground part ready to go in the vise. So now we're roughing, two millimeter ball mill, and we're doing a feed format again. So total roughing and finishing time on this was a little under 50 minutes, and when you compare that to making a RAM EDM electrode and burning it, and it's just, for, for shallow features like this, for, uh, carbide milling is really great. Um, but if you can wire it or if you can surface grind it, those are my first options, but I'll do this before I do RAM EDM. Now you can't quite see it, but I am lifting the tool between paths. Uh, and I'm also entering and exiting the cut at a slightly reduced feed rate, and that helps with chip out when you're near an unsupported area. Um, but yeah, the lifting and the reduced feed rates are both something the manufacturer recommends. One problem with the coated tools, you can see I'm kind of sticking out of the holder a bit more than I'd like. That coating creeps up almost five millimeters on the shank, 
um, and it's pretty thick, like 10 microns thick. So you, you have to hang your tools out a little bit more than's optimal sometimes. And I, I wish they would not do that, but whatever. All right, so this is our semi-finishing floor pass. Uh, the cusp from the roughing is, is a bit severe, and I don't want to pick that up and have a ripple in my finish when I do my floor finishing. So just laying down a semi-finish can really go a long way to getting those flawless finishes. Here I am doing my parallel floor finish. After this, I'll do a contour cut on the angles and radii. Um, but as you can see, it's really, really shiny and reflective and smooth. And when you compare that to a finish you get on a RAM EDM and how important those finishes are in certain die applications, you can see why this is a process I really like. Well, thank you for watching. We're at the end of the video. And check out those rainbows. That's a gorgeous part.